Hello, welcome to Algorithms. My name is Saurabh and today we are going to discuss about CIS security controls for Azure. Those who don't know about uh, CIS uh, and they are new in security practice, uh, CIS is basically the Center for Internet Security. It's a non-profit organization established in uh, 2000 and its mission is to identify, develop, validate, promote and sustain best practices solutions for cyber defense and build and lead communities to enable an environment of trust in cyberspace. Now, uh, the primary role of uh, this organization is to benchmark different products and services uh, which are provided by different corporations, especially like AWS, they have got their own CIS benchmarking, similarly Azure uh, and uh, others as well, like for Windows, there are different benchmarks. So, uh, and I guess I explained this in the past as well. So I'm just uh, giving you an overview of CIS. So let's start with the presentation. So as you can see that CIS 1.1.0 security controls for Azure, uh, it is pretty much readable. I have put together in such a format that you can easily get a grasp of uh, the number of security controls in each area like logging and monitoring. There are 16 uh, security controls for database services. There are 19 security controls uh, and uh, for app service. There are 10 security controls. Now let me tell you that uh, uh, out of all only 48 of them have been enabled for automatic auditing in Azure and uh, very few of them have any automated remediation available and uh, a lot of them require manual steps and need a regular review uh, to make sure any changes are done to existing resources and the new resources added to the environment still comply with them and those are the challenges which organizations are facing whatever is listed as default it's great but how do you map it with the CIS 1.1.0? Uh, so if so, a lot of security experts they have knowledge about CIS, but they don't know about uh, the tools. For instance, Azure Security Center or overall cloud. So that's where they face challenge. Similarly, the organizations face challenge in terms of implementing these controls because anything which is default is good. Anything which goes out of the default. Uh, that's a challenge because how do you identify them? How do you implement them? Uh, what are the guidance that you need to establish around those areas? So that, that's where uh, this presentation comes in and this is going to help you in terms of understanding and getting a good uh, grasp of uh, the current state of your organization that how you have uh, uh, done the architecture uh, when it comes to enterprise security and or when it comes to Azure cloud because most of the customers uh, uh, we spoke to they have hybrid cloud environment so even if you have Azure or AWS you have to make sure that you are following those security controls or the benchmarks that has been provided by these uh, 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 institutions uh, that helps as I said in terms of security defense now the other important point is only 40 of the uh, CIS security controls are enabled by default in Azure and the remaining 71 need manual intervention and monitoring. So as I said some of them so those some of them are 71. So what are those 71 uh, uh, controls that requires uh, uh, manual intervention and configuration and monitoring that's something that uh, I'm going to present uh, on a, in a different uh, 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 presentation but uh, as this one is more about focusing on uh, first uh, what exactly it is and how it looks like the number of controls in each area so this is our objective and I am sure that uh, those who are security experts looking at this presentation uh, must be able to relate to their environment and, and this is a good point of departure for them to go and verify uh, what has been enabled and what is not enabled. Security controls you can get uh, uh, from the CIS website as well. Uh, plus, uh, I'm going to put together a list of uh, these security controls along with the domain, for instance, identity and access management and what are the security controls name. Uh, for instance, ensure that multi-factor authentication is enabled for all non-privileged users. Ensure that there are no guest users. Ensure that number of days before users are asked to reconfirm their authentication information is set to zero. So these are the security controls. Similarly, for uh, uh, 
uh, database services. So ensure that auditing is set to on. Ensure that audit action groups in auditing policy for SQL Server is set property is set properly. Similarly, for monitoring and uh, activity logs. So you have like uh, around eight to ten different security controls. Uh, now with the app service so now as you can see means we have looked at all the different areas whether it is application database network security all the security controls are listed now what you need to do is okay you need to have an instruction manual which clearly says okay uh, how do you enable it how do you disable it now the important question is you may or may not need all of them uh, it all depends on uh, the business vertical you are in because you have to look at the compliance as well for instance if you are in finance if you have uh, a, 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 a payment system and uh, a payment card system and then you have to comply with the pci dss so first the first thing is to make sure that you check all the security controls which falls under the pci dss and then you go for the further uh, strengthening because uh, most of them are listed here because they when they when cis uh, benchmark any product or service they look at uh, the maximum they go for maximum so you need to figure out uh, uh, what is right or best fit for your organization because you cannot enable multi-factor or you don't enable multi-factor authentication for every user that's very expensive because uh, uh, that's how these products are designed means if you go for premier uh, azure uh, ad premier uh, premium one or premium two that provides you uh, uh, i guess a multi-factor authentication uh, 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 feature and if you use that i guess that is charged per user basis as i remember you can check on the internet if i am wrong now so those are the things you have to consider because the moment you start to enable all those things uh, there may be a cost involved so you have to uh, take cost considerations as well so there is a balanced uh, solution uh, or architecture at the end of the day and it is very well mapped so you have the reference architecture you have the security controls you have your compliance with that you fall in based on your industry and then what are the tools you are using and then you are calculating the cost based upon the features that you are using uh, within the tool and then next two to three years how the security landscape is going to change and how are you going to implement those controls if anything changes so that uh, buffer for security has to be considered as well i guess uh, this is it from my side thank you very much for uh, watching this presentation till the end uh, have a great day